Steve Mignani here doing a junkyard crawl at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts. And this is a 1964 Chevrolet. We've got to remember that Chevrolet sold 2.3 million cars in 1964, of which 1.6 million or most were full-size models. Now we got to remember in 64, the Corvair, the Nova, the Chevelle were all, and the Corvette were all nibbling at the full-size line's feet. But again, the full-size cars like this Impala held the table up at Chevrolet. Now this one here is a 64. Let's have a look under the hood. 64 could be a, a six-cylinder, a 283, a 327, or a 409, and what do we got? All right, we got nothing. <laughs> but this is interesting. This does have the optional power drum brakes, and again, single pot master cylinder seen until 1967 on all American cars. Also is the optional power steering. If we look down here, uh, later GM cars would have a dedicated power steering box. These have a supplemental RAM, that hydraulic RAM right there. So again, uh, power brakes, power steering on this one here. Uh, no engine visible, but we can still learn. Come around to this side. Okay, it has this little V right here. That tells us this probably had the base 283, more likely a two barrel. Uh, we can continue to learn by going inside here where the VIN reads 418. That eight in the third spot, yup, V8 car. Even numbers are eights, odd numbers are sixes. So uh, we see here a single pedal, power brake. So this is also going to be an automatic car, which means power glide two speed. Uh, the three speed turbo 400 wouldn't arrive until 1967. So all automatic Chevys will have a two speed power glide. Now this is an Impala. It's a hard top. And keep in mind, Chevy was uh, in the full size cars. We had uh, Biscayne, Bel Air, Impala, Impala SS. And the only hard tops without a pillar were the Impala and the Impala SS. The Biscayne and the Bel Air were strictly pillar coupes. So that's the story here. Behind us, we have another Chevy. Now this one's pretty cool. This is a 64 Impala convertible. Now the convertible, of course, was the uh, most expensive version of the Impala. Uh, the only thing next to this would have been a full-size wagon. Those could be kind of pricey, but this is well over 3,000 uh, bucks as a new car. Uh, let's learn more as we go around. Now you could get a six-cylinder engine in an Impala convertible. It's pretty uncommon, but uh, this one's pretty well rusted out. But inside on this one, we see, okay, this probably was a three-speed manual car. Uh, the column shift up here, I don't see the quadrant. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this might have been a power glide, not sure. Again, not a four-speed. Uh, 1959 was the first year that Chevrolet would offer a four-speed transmission in full-size passenger cars. And in 64, you paid an additional 188 bucks for the four on the floor, not seen here. But what we do see here is the one-size-fits-all brake package. This is the 11-inch drum brake seen on all Impalas, from six bangers all the way up to V8s. There was a heavy duty brake package which came down to a different type of a lining, but again, that one size fits all 11 inch drum was a pretty good thing. Now, I always wondered why Chevrolet did not use the 11 inch drums on the midsize Chevelle in high performance applications. The only time they did that was 1965 on the Z16 396 cars. The rest of them had nine and a half inch drums. They could have grabbed them right off these who knows why? Okay, now we go into the world of the four-door Chevy, and these were very popular cars, but the big seller truly was the two-door model in the Impala, Biscayne, and Bel Air line. Four doors were generally less popular sales-wise. Now this one here is a hard top without any kind of a pillar, which tells us it's not a Biscayne, it's not a Bel Air. This is certainly an Impala, because the Impala was the only one available with the four-door hard top body style. The beauty of the four-door hard top roll the windows down, and it's the next best thing to a convertible. Open air motoring, uh, you can look and see, there's no pillars to look and get in the way. The only downside is once these rubber seals got old, you had water and air leaks. So it was a double-edged sword, but again, a nice example of a two or four-door hardtop Impala. Now, this is not an Impala SS, we've got to remember the Impala SS was strictly two doors. No four door Impala SS, except for 1961, the debut year of which a handful were built. Now, here we have a more typical four door Chevy with the fixed pillar, right there. Now, this one here, the door is locked, but this pillar and the full door frames tell us this is either a, a Biscayne or a Bel Air. 
or an Impala. You could actually get the Impala with the post. But again, uh, the Biscayne and Bel Air could not be had as the hardtop, but all three could be available with this, this post here. Now, this is probably bought by somebody who didn't want to hear the wind and the water uh, whistle and leak as the years went by. Now, this one shows a V8 emblem here. So again, probably a 283. The 327, we have a 327 up here. Uh, and of course, the 409 would also have a different emblem. So this is probably a 283 two-barrel, maybe four-barrel car. Moving on to the granddaddy of them all, the station wagon. Now, we've got to remember that the station wagon, the steel-bodied wagon, was new in the post-World War II era, replacing wood-bodied wagons. I think 1949 or 50 was the first steel-bodied wagon. And at Chevrolet, uh, steel-bodied wagons went from maybe 3% of production to about 16% of production by 1964. So wagons were very popular vehicles in the day because this essentially was the, the minivan of the 1960s. You know, baby boomer families went to and from the supermarket on family vacations in the wagon. Now this one, uh, the brakes on this master cylinder is right here. I don't see if there's power brake booster or not. Um, we can look at the cowl tag over here and learn a little bit more about this one. Now these are available as six passenger or nine passenger wagons. We go to the VIN and if we see 164, it's a nine passenger or 163, that means this was a uh, a, a six passenger wagon, not the big nine passenger car with three rows of seating. Let's walk down the side here. And I gotta, I gotta say the beauty of the steel dashboard stamped to look kind of like a, a fiberglass Corvette dash, but that's all metal. And yeah, not, a, not an ounce of uh, foam padding to be seen. You know, federally mandated crash worthiness was still a little ways down the road in 1964. But inside, we look, you could get a four speed in your wagon in 1964, but clearly not seen here. Uh, it might have been a radio delete car, not sure. Usually people don't take the trim plates for no good reason, but I like what we see here. Here are the original poverty wheel covers. These are what you would have found as base wheel covers on 1964 Chevys, probably original to this car. Here in the, in the back, there is, uh, okay, a manual, a couple manual transmissions right there. Those are three speeds to the left. Uh, this car, I don't see pedals under the dash, so this might have been a three-speed manual uh, from the factory. Not that uncommon. And keep in mind, the pedal assembly under the dash, if you look like there, you see the pedals are gone. Uh, if you have a four on the floor, full-size Chevy, or want to make one, the three on the tree pedal assembly totally does the job. So this probably was a manual transmission car that somebody scavenged the pedals to turn their full-sized into a four-on-the-floor car. The pedal, again, is workable for that. This one does have the uh, fold-down tailgate with the re receding glass. These were available with either manual like this or a power motor inside. So again, this car, if it could only talk, the family vacations it went on and uh, maybe even pulled a, a gasser with a tow bar behind it. You just don't know. Cars don't talk. So we got to give them a voice. But 1964, again, of 2.3 million Chevrolets sold, 1.6 or so million were full-size cars like this. Now that equation would remain almost constant throughout the 1960s, but of course by the 70s the full-size cars were pretty much uh, surpassed by the smaller vehicles as we race toward fuel economy and better emissions. But uh, 64 Chevy is one of the best cars out there and uh, it's amazing to see four or five of them with every body style option uh, here at Bernstein Auto Wrecking. So if you like this video be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. There's plenty more to come.